So hello and welcome everybody to another edition of the Quantum Compass. This is episode number 11. My name is David Farrell and today I'm joined by my wonderful co-host, the one and only... Bella Alvaran. Hi everybody. Hey, so how are you Bella? How are you riding out the surf at the moment? Really good. Uh, quite intensive. Uh, the whole energy just intensified in the in the last few weeks, didn't it? With this Gemini, lots of information coming from everywhere. It's like there's been an acceleration. Right. I know that we've been feeling it this week. We, we've had a lot of downloads, right? It's been a very information-driven week, uh, almost to the point of too much. Uh, mm -hmm. Like some of the download sessions have been hours, and, and yet at the same time, True. trying to process all of that information, that very Gemini rapid delivery of intel, whether it's from the astral planes, the higher dimensions, or whether it's just on our news right now. And maybe uh, that's going to be part of the focus of what we need to transcend, because this is going to be an episode talking about the energy of the blue magnetic eagle. That's which is correct. the next wave spell in our sequence from the 12th to the 24th of june so we've got lots of astrology to look at as well this is a wave spell that's going to cover the uh in the northern hemisphere the summer solstice and in the southern hemisphere of course the winter solstice otherwise known as the cancer solstice so uh, very very powerful energies on the cardinal points at work right now but as always, we're going to do our usual uh, routine, and I'm going to hand over to the Mayan experts who talk us through the energies of the wave spell that is going to encapsulate the next 13 days from the 12th. That's correct. So let's start with the presentation, then we have a few slides to share. And so I'd like to start with the moon. Uh, we still have the same moon as we did for the previous wave spell. Is called the Crystal Moon of Cooperation, which runs from May 30th through June 26th. And uh, I wanted to show here the diagram of the turtle, which is uh, very well known in very in many cultures, really many uh, ancient cultures. And and it's about incorporating the energy of the moon, 28 days and um, 13 cycles. So we moved from moon number 11 to number 12. We're still here and we're going to continue. Number 13 is a very key number because it's the number of uh, creation, of tones to creation. So we'll talk more about that because the whole Mayan cosmology is based on number 13. So we're getting very close to the last moon here, number 13. And this moon it still has the same totem, which is the rabbit. And we've seen the energy, very uh, sharp intellect, lots of information, very fast information, very Gemini, like what we've been experiencing. And lots of bunnies running around. I don't know if, wherever you are, but I've seen hundreds of them around. So the energy is, uh, is that it's very quick, uh, very connected to the intellect. Do you have any comments on the moon up to here? No, I just, I, I think it's very much like you said, right? It's very connected to the Gemini energy, very quick. You have to be sharp almost to keep up with it. So yeah, it feels very commensurate with what's been experiencing, I guess. And now we'll go into the actual wave spell, which is um, the blue magnetic eagle. This is the glyph here. And I've talked about how the red energies are the initiators, initiators of processes, the white are the refiners, the blue are the transformers. So we're in a wave spell of transformation. And I think we'll be feeling that uh, quite intensively. Uh, and I will talk more about that during the astrology. But this is the wave spell. It starts here with number or day uh, 235. As you can see, we're getting very much close to the end of the Solkin. This is the, the wave spell before the last. And so we want to start paying attention to, um, okay, are you, uh, if you're following the, the soul king, uh, make sure that you're coming to a point of finalizing. And um, we're going to start a new soul king in July. We'll be giving more information about that. And here on the right, we have the glaive of the blue eagle. Uh, I also mentioned the castles, um, which are these uh, series of uh, four wave spells, these blocks. And we're here uh, working towards the last, um, this is the last castle, the green one. We're here on this wave spell and about to finish the last one, which is the star. So I hope that some of you have been following the castles because they are very practical when it comes to creating a process for 52 days, which is the four wave spells. Um, well, 
Yep. I'm also just right. noticing Bella there from uh, from the Zolkin calendar. We've actually got two galactic portals in this wave spell too, right? I hadn't actually clocked that material before on day five and day seven. So just to point yes. those out, they are the green ones. These Powerful four. days from which, and actually with the energy of the rabbit and Gemini, I would suggest these are days when we can really call forth maybe galactic information that may allow us to make a jump or a shift. And that's the beauty of, of the, the Mayan calendars. We're much more aware of these days of connection to the galactic center, even we can say, and possible other sources of information that may help us navigate through these uh, these choppy periods. We're going to talk a bit about that in the astrology, but I really see that the Blue Eagle is going to give us that opportunity to perhaps integrate and assimilate more galactic information. So just highlighting those two days there, day five and day seven. Day seven, that's right. right. Okay, so let's talk about the qualities of the Blue Eagle, and it has to do with vision the eagle's perch that's what we're going to talk about during this whole episode because it's what he's calling us to do uh it's also connected to freedom uh higher collective mind planetary consciousness commitment hope compassion and service and um just envision the the eagle uh, as a totem as well which is all to do with the higher perspective or the 5d perspective of things and the shadow that we will work with during this wave spell is having subjective views or a very narrow perception of things. And remember, we're in the season of Gemini still. And so we'll be given lots of information and polarity. And we want to make sure we're having a more objective approach to things, a 5D perspective. Um, more shadow to do with this glaive is um, having or being too connected or identified with the savior role, not being able to say no, uh, loss of hope and a sense of futility, which can happen a lot during the next few weeks uh, because of the amount of overwhelm that could be coming our way. And this is what we want to uh Keep in mind, the transformation for this is rise above the limitations, help raise the collective consciousness, see the higher perspective, believe in yourself and your dreams and your visions. This is the wave spell of vision. So keep, uh, keep make sure that you have clarity in where you want to end up. What is it that you want to achieve? And we're all working here for the highest good, but also for your own projects and dreams. Any comments on, on this wave spell? Let me just finish this part. Um, this um, glyph has the action of creativity. So connect to your creativity as well during this wave spell. It has the essence of mind, connect to your higher mind and the power of vision. Have a clear vision on where you want to go. Okay, that's it for this um, wave spell. Did you have any comments on this one? Well, I mean, as we're seeing now, uh, 11 episodes into this unfolding um, dialogue, we can say that we're having with the universe in general through the Mayan time wave spell containers, the Mayan mind stream, uh, what you're anchoring here with this information, Bella, but also how we're seeing that we can have our minds or our awareness in multiple timelines, actually, in, in, you know, it, in more than one moment. And I think that's super interesting that with the mechanisms of the technology that uh, the Mayans have left us here and that uh, our brother Jose Arguez managed to decode for us is that we're entering into this penultimate wave spell of, of this Sulkin in the Green Castle, which is the final castle, the the integration point, or we could even say perhaps somehow at the elemental level representing ether, uh, is is coming to a place of culmination. And I think it's really interesting that there's only one more wave spell after this. And what I feel like we're being urged to do here with the blue eagle is to really use that eagle's perch perspective, otherwise known as the fifth dimensional non-dualistic space, to rise above the more polarizing energies that we are experiencing with the Gemini sequence that we've kind of been in and will be in for some of this wave spell. It's going to start to shift during this wave spell, but we'll have a look at that in a minute with the astrology. But I think it's just amazing how coherent it is uh, every time we do this better. And I'm just amazed. And I would suggest that the wave spell that we've been in, the white uh, magnetic wind has been challenging. I, I definitely have found it a little more challenging than I expected. And maybe it's the nature of the wind. It's the nature of communication. It doesn't have such a strong an obvious container so maybe if some of you are a bit like me you may have got pulled a bit this way a bit that way i've definitely found it a little harder to stay rooted and concentrating on on what i'm doing abella i don't know whether you've experienced that 
uh, over the last, like particularly the last few days. But I think that's the push pull energy of Gemini in general. And that's without even watching the goggle box. That's just reading the energies in the field and, and experiencing it within myself. So just wanted to, to share that in case some of our audience has had a little bit of a bumpy run over the last um, week. Or I would suggest actually, even since the Jupiter Kazemi, since we landed in New Earth, that 40 day cycle that we were measuring We've been confronted with what it's like to land on a new shore in a new in a new world, we can say, a new earth. And if you really stop and think about that for a second, it's like, well, if you're on a voyage of discovery and you discovered a new land and your boat touched onto the shores of a beach, uh, what does that look like? That's new earth. That's a, a metaphorical, we can say, or an uh, analogous example of, um, of what it could be like. And so if you think about it from that perspective, what would be the first things that you do? You would make a base camp, you would get yourself ready. Then you might start thinking about exploring into the the jungle that is right beside the beach or however you want to look at this but i want to share this kind of imagery because if we think about the new earth and we're calling it the new earth cuboid so to speak that we're in right now how does that actually look well you have to get used to it it's a new frequency it's a new dynamic it's a new set of rules or instructions you can say and maybe that's what's caused some of this kind of push pull uh, the pull of the old world still trying to keep us in that and also the pull of the the, the new earth saying hey but this is really where it's at right now and, and where are you at and maybe some people have been getting a bit pulled backwards and forwards by that energy so i don't know uh i just wanted to share that Bella, because that's seems to me to be why we've got the blue eagle right now is to help us with that process that maybe some of us have been experiencing yeah so that we can uh yeah raise above all of that chaos that is going on it feels like the collective consciousness is overcharged we have had a lot of geomagnetic storms uh, lots of information and you know that the information goes into the field and it affects our mind. So we have a lower mind and a higher mind. The lower mind is the one that gets affected with this amount of chaos going on. So we need to be able to race to our higher mind. Good. Right. And these are the, these are the reflective right. questions for this wave spell. Uh, it's the 13 that we normally use. It's the same ones every wave spell. So on day one, you want to connect to uh, the uh, identify the purpose for these 13 days. On day two, you identify your challenge. On day three, you identify the service. And remember that you could use this for any kind of processes. It could be uh, moving houses. It could be... Uh, relationships, it could be healing, any type of project that you may have uh, over the next 13 days, or at least just be present and be present reading the energy of what's going on around you. Right, that's what I was just about to say, actually, Bella, was that if we think about using or working with that eagle energy, that uh, ability to see uh, more more of the picture from that loftier perspective. It's not to say that that if we're getting pushed and pulled, that's wrong or incorrect, or we're doing something that's you know that's not right. That's that's not the point at all. It's it's to be able to observe. That's uh, exactly what we covered in chapter two, right? Polarization, which is the second day of of a, of a wave spell. Uh, it's it's tone number two, which is looking at the challenge and seeing the challenge, and rather than getting pulled into it and getting thrown around by it, say hey actually the, the challenge is something that i can work with uh, and from that eagle's perch perspective we can see the holistic nature of the push pull the polarization and say okay i see both sides of it i'm not particularly this way or that way but i know that i can work with this at an alchemical level and transform it which of course is interesting because the eagle is the ascended version of the scorpio energy it's what happens when the scorpio goes through the phoenix process which i'm going to talk also a little bit about because of the star uh, that i want to just talk about in relation to this but it's what happens when we get to that more ascended aspect and we can see uh what needs to be transformed and alchemized either within ourselves or life and situations around Around us. Okay. And here I just wanted to mention um, that uh, we want to emphasize the uh, relevance of the course as we are about to complete the Solkin. This is, uh, the, there are two more wave spells, this blue eagle wave spell and one more, and then we'll finish this cycle. So it's a perfect opportunity for you guys interested in this material to absorb it and integrate it before we go into the new cycle where we can jump all together and start a whole new time and cycle uh, with more consciousness and, and as a collective. So with right. that in mind, uh, we wanted to offer a 20% discount on this course uh, from now until, uh, is it the 21st? The 21st, right? 
Right. So the offer is working with the 1320 principle. So for the next 13 days from uh, today, which is day 10 of the wave spell that we're in, which is generally when we try to record quantum compass until day 10 of the blue magnetic uh, eagle wave spell, which is actually going to be the full moon in Capricorn. So a very nice way to to illuminate whatever process you're stepping into. But as Bella said, and I think we're going to do a special Zolkin uh, end of year and preview, right, Bella, maybe in the next uh, week to 10 days to talk about what's coming up with the Zolkin uh, ending in in July um, because that's also an important moment but as Bella said we're really trying to anchor a new frequency of time and space here and mm -hmm. the more of us that are doing that and the more of us that are working in a coherent fractal time that will become the predominant energy on the planet so this is a big kind of uh, incentive we can say to try and encourage more of you our wonderful viewers and listeners to step into the world that certainly me and Bella are already existing in and actually quite a few of our tribe members are now also existing in and, uh, and thousands of people around the world I mean I didn't start his Jose Arguelles did so much work and there are Mayan groups from like uh, that have inherited the knowledge but Jose Arguelles and his work and the law of time they have they went around the world in the 80s 90s and, and and there are thousands of people around the world that already follow this calendar and already have a different view of what time is and creation and manifestation and art as uh, as the constant rather than time is money time is art so creating all the time your dreams and everything that you have to offer to the world right that's very true of course and the more of us that are in that frequency the more coherent it will become and the more the predominant uh coherent resonance or frequency that will be and what you just said is really important, Bella, because uh, maybe some of our audience like us are tracking what is going on a little bit in the collective energy spaces. And we can see that there are some big things happening in the world of finance and uh, in that regard, money as well. So it's interesting that we're at this point where things are going to change. And perhaps as a collective, our emphasis is going to change away from money uh, being the, the primary driving factor for most people. Yeah, and there is a very interesting convergence here. So the Solkin is coming to an end, and the Solkin is the 260-day cycle. Um, the, the moon cycle of 13 moons is coming to an end also in July. So we're going to have a fresh new start in July. And we see the astrology is also showing us that we're going and getting ready for the new thing with Neptune at the end of Pisces, with the movements of Pluto into Aquarius. So there is a lot of energy of, okay, new cycles, get ready. And it would be great if lots of us are following the same uh, time and creating our magic. Right, exactly. And just to give some people uh, watching some some other markers for their calendar, the final um, wave spell of this Solkin is, of course, the yellow magnetic star that runs from the 25th of June to uh, July the 7th, which will be the end of this Mayan uh, Zolkin. Uh, so that means that the following day on July the 8th, we start again with the red magnetic dragon and then we get into the first castle and the first wave spell. And then, of course, uh, we have the um, day out of time, which is a little bit later in the month on the 25th of July. So a lot of big endings, beginnings happening in July. So what I'm seeing here, Bella, is that this particular wave spell room with the Blue Eagle is getting prepared. I think yes. being prepared for what is coming ahead, which is lots of big changes in our world, big cycles yes. ending, big cycles beginning. And I think the most important thing is from the position of the eagle, this is nothing to be afraid of. In fact, from the position of the eagle, everything looks pretty good because you can see more of the picture. When mm -hmm. you bring yourself back down and you don't give yourself the option of the eagle's perch perspective, you end up with a much more narrow bandwidth, I would suggest, from which to operate from, which... Personally speaking, I'd rather have a much bigger bandwidth and see the total options rather than just see maybe one or two, uh, because I feel that it gives you more room to be flexible and to navigate and to move with the flow. Good. So let's go into the astrology now then. All righty. Yeah. So um, we talked a lot about uh, Mercury, really, and Gemini in the last uh, edition because it was very, very uh, coherent and commensurate with the energy of the white magnetic wind, which is the wave spell that we are just finishing off right now. And that energy kind of continues into really um, this next wave spell, at least the first half of this next wave spell. And then with the energy shifting into cancer on the solstice, uh, the energy starts to shift. But just to quickly run uh, through the, the, the dates that we're not going to pull up the charts on. So we've got this um, Mercury in Gemini squaring Saturn in Pisces at 19 degrees to kick off the uh, the wave spell. 
So um, what to say about this? Well, I, I think this is a day where we have to be careful about what we think and therefore what we say. Um, could be uh, a, a day where we want to be mindful about what we're communicating with that square to Saturn in Pisces. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about the energy of Saturn around that midpoint of Pisces a little bit too, because it's been over some very, very important stars, which... Some of our, um, this is the fixed star, some of our audience may have seen in some of the recent Cosmic History Codes episodes that I did with Leslie, but I'll, I'll come to that a little bit later on because I think it's an important part of the some of the energy of the Blue Eagle, which is how do we get to a more consistent 5D perspective? And what does that look and feel like? Because I feel like many people are perhaps sort of ducking in and out of that frequency, Bella, but maybe not really sure what is it and maybe not realizing that they're already in that space. So we can talk a bit more about how that energy might feel. Um so, yeah, this is a day where the monkey mind can start to run amok. And I think that this is the danger that we see with Gemini in its lower notes is that the monkey mind becomes the driving force rather than the, the valve of connection to the uh, higher mind, which is the heart. So rather than listening to what the heart is saying, maybe we need to be careful that we're not listening to what the monkey mind or the lower mind is, is saying. And, and that often is running on information that is coming directly out of the 3D or maybe distorted 4D space rather than from the higher perspective. And so that's why it's really important to get our heart and our mind into a coherence. The mind is an amazing thing. We need it to navigate uh, this kind of soupy space uh, as it currently is. But at the same time, it's not the, the predominant intelligence that we can work with. We want to work with our higher heart mind so um that's also really important and i i feel like we could be seeing lots of different options on the table here so if we think about saturn providing us that structure moving forwards uh i would suggest that perhaps we're going to see different types of new structures appearing but maybe even in the financial sector as maybe one system leaves our awareness and other maybe more multiple options are presented we might need to take an eagle's perch perspective on on what resonates for us let's let's try to think of things about how it feels rather than how it sounds or how i'm hearing it uh, in, in a kind of a mind space so that's that's how we kick off this way so that's day one um just want to allude uh, uh draw attention rather to um to some of our more astrologically inclined um audience about a black moon lily flashpoint uh which is happening at a quite a, i would say potent degree of uh, 28 18 of virgo and the black moon lily flashpoint just to recap is is a moment where the true black moon and the mean black moon or i always get tongue twisted on those actually come together in a moment of conjunction it's very very brief often just for a few actual minutes in a day sometimes uh twice in a month I managed to to track this one to the second day to day two, which, of course, is a day of polarizing energies or challenges in this wave spell. So I think that these Black Moon Lily flashpoints are a moment, as we know, that where you can, again, call forth or put into the mix extra intentions. It's kind of like a Brucey bonus. It's like a hidden aspect of the astrology where we can call forth something we need or we can use it as a kind of cosmic, <clears throat> excuse me, emailing blockchain service and we can pop a request into that black moon lily flash point and if we know how to track this then it will pop out on another designated one so it's kind of like how to how to um send ourselves messages into the future which we can then receive in the future from the past it's kind of how to how to navigate around time so I just wanted to put that into the awareness i think it's important um then we go to uh what will be the first of the astro charts which we'll talk about in more detail which is another kazemi i think that this was perhaps the final and more hidden Kazemi in the Kazemi sequence where Mercury and the Sun can join at 24 degrees of Gemini, which is uh, conjunct, very interestingly, the star Polaris, which I'm going to talk about very much in the energy of Gemini and many other things going on. Um, we then uh, have a very, very important and actually really beautiful day coming up which i didn't do a chart for but i do want to talk about which is when venus enters cancer and is conjunct with mercury on the zero degree cardinal point of cancer right ahead of the cancer solstice just a couple of days later at the same degree so we've got this very very powerful conjoining of energies right at the beginning of cancer with uh mercury and venus and then also the sun. So do you have anything you'd like to, to say about uh, the, the, the energy of cancer? Okay, uh, so I'll move on. And uh, then finally, we also have the full moon on day 10, the day of manifestation at one degree of Capricorn. So we're going to have a quick look at that. To be fair, the charts of the solstice 
and the full moon pretty much the same. I did do one for each just uh, for visual purposes and we will have a look at those. So perhaps we'll go now, Bella, to um, to the June the 14th, Mercury Kazemi. Uh, okay, we'll focus on those. So Mercury conjoining with the sun, here we go at 24 degrees of Gemini. So I, I would like to offer this as, a, as an idea that perhaps it's also uh, there with Venus as well. So we've got this kind of mini stellium all holding hands through this last degrees of Gemini and entering uh, Cancer, where I think that the energies will start to, to perhaps separate more because of the different speeds of the sun, Mercury and Venus. So we've got a lot of this very inner planet energy um obviously our friend mars is not quite in that mixture uh, but is in play uh, somewhere else which i'll maybe talk about too but i feel like the mercury and the sun is a sort of a light bulb uh moment abella a kind of like aha this is what all of this kind of craziness and backwards and forwards and information overload has been about what can i do with this and because it's got that nice kind of uh conjunction there just within a couple of degrees with venus it can also be a message from the heart so i think that perhaps this is where the eagle intuition which is also another expression we can say of the heart energy from the fifth dimensional realm maybe of the goddess energy can start to infuse whatever these ideas are and i feel like we're being encouraged to express the message of who we are who are we after all of these things that we've been through already? Because we're coming up to the halfway point of the year, which is pretty incredible. Um, I certainly know that 2024 has been a pretty far out year for me and not quite what I expected. Um, which, by the way, I'm going to be sharing more about, Bella, in, in the coming weeks. It's more about the journey that I've been on uh, from a more Eagle's Perch perspective uh, in order to uh, work through my healing process. So do watch out for that. That's going to come out on YouTube on QPW uh, from a healing perspective, how to work with your mind for healing uh so i feel like you know that's also been part of it valerie working with the mind glyphs working with the mayan time speaking for myself i know that i'm much more comfortable now uh with with my i would say my mind energy my skywalking energy it's helped me understand my life it's helped me uh, become more grounded in who I am and what my mission here is as the Skywalker. It's bringing 5D down to 3D. So a lot of this show really is, is me living my mission code. So I think that that's really beautiful. So again, just wanting to point to people that, you know, if you haven't had an activation, maybe with your mind glyph, definitely recommend uh, checking in with Bella about that because many people that already have, we're seeing incredible things happening for them, right, Bella, that they're really kind of accelerating in their growth and I would say understanding of themselves. Yeah, there's been a very beautiful feedback uh, coming uh, from the people that got activated with their Mayan glyph, with their galactic archetypes, with their wave spell, knowing when the next galactic birthday is coming, how can they use the energy. So yeah, really good feedback. Um, on this chart, I'd like to share that it, it also supports the the idea of the amount of polarity by coming, you know, coming from politics and from lots of different sources and trying to polarize us with lots of information. And the only way forward is to come back into the heart and make sure that we can uh, have good relationships and be very diplomatic when it comes to having two perspectives presented. And remember that it's all just a matter of perspectives. We need to be able to rise above uh, and see that everybody's going to see things in a different way. And so let's do it uh, with good relationships, with lots of communication and, and just uh, allowing everybody to have their point of view. Right, good point. And also, as you were just saying, I'm scanning around the chart and what's catching my eye is, of course, that there's that square there to Black Moon Lilith. Uh, down at 28 degrees of uh, Virgo, which I think is also something to remember that we're looking perhaps at the polarization even of the masculine and feminine that I know we've been talking about quite a bit and also something that we cover in chapter two of the Navigation Guide to Quantum Consciousness. And uh, we've, we've just passed through, or we will be over the next day or so around the time of this uh, episode coming out, a series of squares, which we can see uh, still going on with Saturn over there at 19 degrees of Pisces. But what I really wanted to also point to, Bella, and it's not on this chart, is that at 24 degrees of Gemini, there is a big star called Polaris, uh, which for our stellar nations, our listeners uh, will obviously resonate. But to sum up what we can say, this is a star that carries the energy of polarity and is also very, very much connected, actually, uh, in that tradition and that pathway to the energy of, we can say, the tech, the uh, the fallen arthropod energy, the ETs. So I would like to suggest that what we're looking at here is a polarization in the narrative 
the the narrative as presented through the goggle box is uh something that is, is tech driven it's driven i believe by that kind of ai extraterrestrial energy uh which holds up the matrix the matrix is pretty much an extraterrestrial uh, projection we can say so i feel like as many other channels and presenters are also saying is like is it obvious yet that we're watching a movie that we're in some sort of simulation at what point do we let go of that so i think it's really interesting that that kind of mercury the messenger with our friend and big brother uh solano or el sol is kind of hitting that big star of, of polarization and saying hey are you getting this yet are you still caught in the polarization are you still believing the images the narratives that are being given to you or are you believing in yourself are you believing in what you feel? And then if so, are you living from that space? And if not, well, just so happens that we're in the energy of the blue magnetic eagle. So you can work with that energy to lift above it. And this is actually on day three, Bella, of the wave spell. Uh, and as we are about to, to release in chapter three of the navigation guide to quantum com compass, uh, consciousness, rather, uh, that's actually looking at the energy of activation and electrification. So it's kind of like how to initiate the ideas so I would like to invite Which everybody. is really good. It's yeah. really good because look at the trine that Pluto and Uranus have there. So it's like the electricity coming from Uranus is supporting, you know, let's go through the change. Let's go through the uh, transformation, Pluto is saying. And um, Jupiter is there also doing a trine with Pluto saying, yeah, let's expand all of this transformation now. Right. So I would like to, I was just going to say, like to invite our audience to to contemplate the energies that, that are taking place on June the 14th as a really, really amazing day to initiate, ignite, electrify whatever it is that's been bubbling up within you and to not allow yourself to get pulled into. I'm not going to do this because it doesn't make sense. Or people have told me it's a bad idea. Don't listen to anybody else. Do what feels good for you. Do whatever has come up and arisen within you. And perhaps it's something you're going to communicate to the world. Hey, this is actually really who I am. And I'm going to share now what an amazing person I am and what I have to share with the world. It's okay for us to do that. I and mean, I think actually in the world to come, Bella, we're going to be encouraged to, to operate from that space, to be the most amazing aspect of ourselves that we possibly can be. Yes, and we'll give even more tips in the navigation guide um, to quantum consciousness. Good. You wanted to talk about Pakal Votan. Well, uh, yes and no. I could have chosen a number of sarcophaguses uh, to choose from. <laughs> I could have been Egypt, but I thought, well, this is the quantum compass. There's a very strong Mayan uh, focus. So let's uh, go to the great man himself and look at his very, very famous lid of his sarcophagus, which uh, many people have said is some sort of spacecraft or machinery or something like this. Now, uh, I just have, I do have to check my notes for this because it's a little more precise. But when myself and... Uh, our friend and guide from the Stellar Nations Pathway, Leslie Shankman, did the Cosmic History Codes episode, let me check my notes, uh, episode number four, when Mars was conjuncting Saturn at around 14, 15 degrees of Pisces. There is a, a very powerful star there called Akamar, which is really where uh, there is a big initiation, which is the initiation into fifth dimensional consciousness, which is really summed up as how we pierce the darkness with our own inner light. Now, interestingly... In the ancient cultures, they knew about this. Uh, it's kind of written about in various books as a three-day uh, experience, normally often using very, very strong plant medicine where a, an initiate hopeful is put into a sealed tomb or rock-cut chamber, or we can even say a sarcophagus, uh, similar to this one or the one that's in the king's chamber in the pyramid. Uh, there is some sort of death uh, process initiated. The person then experiences what it's like to have their consciousness still very much uh, as they are, but somehow outside of their body. I am now thinking that this uh, sarcophagus lid is the man himself, Pakal Vatan, piercing uh, his own uh, darkness with his own inner light and thus ascending back to his more fifth dimensional perspective. Now, that's how they used to do it in the old days, several thousand years ago. We're now in a different cycle. There's a lot more light on the planet. We don't necessarily have to put ourselves into a, a sealed <laughs> sarcophagus for three days to have this experience but what i do want to suggest uh with the astrology on on the 14th is that we've been given an opportunity here to go into the dark we can say very similar to this space and receive the insights that are coming from the universe and from this mercury kazemi so that we can pierce whatever is remaining of our own shadow space and it kind of ascend we can say to the more lofty 5d perspective of the eagle 
So I just wanted to show that because Saturn is bouncing around uh, backwards and forwards over this star and is about to go into retrograde uh, for a little while. So it's, it's just a couple of degrees off Akamar, which is at 15 degrees 39 of Pisces. And Saturn is now currently at 19. But it is going to uh, to retro back uh, over this point in, in the coming weeks. And so, again, it's going to be in all probably for uh, maybe a month or two, I would suggest. And it's also going to go over another star called Ankar, which is the, the Eye of the Phoenix, which I think is super cool because that's about the mystery of death and rebirth and the light at the end of the tunnel, which is exactly what we've been talking about from the April 8th total solar eclipse to the Jupiter Kazemi. So what I'm understanding from, from these links and decoded elements, Bella, is that we're at that point where it's like, have we learned everything that's been shown to us already this year? Have we learned from the processes of the last four years? Many of the characters that we can say we've seen a lot of over the last four years maybe some of the more nefarious ones are now in front of us again but for different reasons uh, and i feel like those narratives have now started to fully unwind or unravel we can say and perhaps we're getting to see the illusion because that's the other thing coming up with the uh the the full moon uh is that neptune is in play there is a square going on at the full moon with neptune so uh, that's on the slides we're about to come to but neptune is really offering us the potential i feel at 20 nine degrees of Pisces is that okay this is the totality of the illusion Neptune in 29 degrees of Pisces are you ready to to see the totality of the illusion can you handle the truth do you want to handle the truth or have you seen enough already and you've got the picture and you're ready to move on or do you need to have your face dunked back into the soup so that you really get it so we're definitely coming to I would suggest a crunch moment and depending on where we are in our journey I think is going to probably result in how we experience this next month or two Bella some people that have studied this uh, lead uh, say that this is a phoenix, uh, if you look uh, at it from the other way. So this here would be the phoenix bird. Good. I, Let's go I've seen the... some pretty cool pictures that you've sent me of people that have done reconstructions into 3D. Oh, yeah. And it looks like a spaceship, I'm not going to lie. But, you know, I would like to suggest that maybe Pakal had fun with this in his fifth dimensional self and created a spaceship for himself to travel into other realms with. And he just decided to use that as his image for his, his sarcophagus lid. But, you know, when we think about traveling into other realms, there is a big initiation that we have to go through. It's it's part of it. And our ancestors did it uh, to, to ascend. Um, Jesus, I think, tried to show us on the crucifix or on the total eclipse that happened then that we can skywalk in and out and we can change our consciousness he did it in the rock cut tomb uh to to resurrect and then 40 days later went into his own ascension process so um i feel that we're very much at that point of of choice into death and rebirth are you ready to let go into whatever is coming next because if you are boom we're already here we're on the shores of new earth and some of us have already setting up camp and uh, waiting for you to join the party we've got the the bottles of Bubukas, the bubbles, the bubbly out. And we're like, hey, let's have a party because it's time to start um, building what we all want in our, our hearts. But before we get to that place, we need to understand that we're actually there. Uh, otherwise, it could be a little confusing, which I feel is a bit more of that kind of polarized Gemini energy. So is there anything you, you wish to say around that, Bella? It was kind of a bit of a blurt there for me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, more uh, about the Cancer energy, which obviously uh, with uh, we have Venus and Mercury there. It tells me about uh, maybe communicate your emotions uh, at this point, uh, have uh, open conversations, still keep the high, um, the eagle's perch on the perspectives, but do open yourself to those conversations, especially with the families, with a home, I would say. Um, I, I'd say that's part of what is coming, the nurturing, the mother energy, all of that. Right. You know, and, and thank you for just highlighting that because it's just alerted me again to what I did share briefly was that just a few days before that we have Venus entering Cancer and having that nice little conjunction there. But by the time we get to the uh, the summer solstice, we can see that uh, that the energies are now forming a nice sextile with Mars over in Taurus. So uh, Mercury and Venus both sextiling uh, Mars is a good energy and I feel like it's going to give us the opportunity for portals of manifestation to open which i think is a really beautiful way to think about this and it's a time to bring our creations or our uh, intentions to life 
Um, so again, we're getting this very strong energy of like letting go of the old so that we can really rebirth or birth in the new. And according to where our attention is, we'll, we'll probably dictate how that looks for us. But with this wonderful energy of Venus entering Cancer on on the summer solstice uh, or around just before that time, then I feel like we're giving an extra boost to that energy. Mm, and let's remember all of the sites. We talk about this in the course, but most of the sites uh, uh, of the Mayan culture, they're all aligned to these solstices and equinoxes and even to some constellations. So very important day of alignment within ourselves, with the planet and with the sun. Right. And also just to uh, just loop back something I missed there with the um, Saturn energy as it retros back. By the time we get to the Lionsgate portal, that wonderful uh, energetic sequence on the 8th of August, the 8-8, Saturn will be back over those stars again, those stars of initiation and of the Phoenix. So we still got a little bit of time to to pull our affairs into order, I would suggest. But it's like what I'm really feeling better from my own journeys over the last couple of weeks is that because we've shifted timelines, cuboid however we want to look at this we are now in a much more light infused prism around or a fifth dimensional grid around the planet and so what that's doing is kind of squeezing slowly but surely any dense energy out and so it has nowhere to go which i think is why we're starting to see some very incoherent narratives coming at us through the goggle box things really just don't stack up at all anymore and people are double talking even in their own rhetoric to the point that but you just contradicted yourself there and you're contradicting yourself from really really quite seemingly important things so what am i meant to think about that what i would suggest is that we're watching the implosion of the narrative because it has nowhere to go it, it can't pull any more stunts it doesn't have any more support so it's being squeezed but that's also true at the micro level which is the personal level which is where as we move on to this next uh slide if we could bella to um, um to... can i just say here yeah, yeah. that um because the u.s is also of the sign of cancer uh i think a lot of communication as we've been seeing uh from different uh from politics from financial stuff money situations with uh, venus there so i think a lot of emphasis here in the u.s energy coming forward and let's remember that the eagle is also the bird for the U.S., is the totem. So this blue eagle seems to be quite relevant for the U.S. as well. Right, that's very true. Huh? And, um, yeah, I forgot where I was going now. Um, so as we come to this, yeah, as we come to the full moon in Capricorn, which we can see here, at uh, one degree and roughly seven minutes of, um, of Capricorn, opposing the sun, of course, in... In Cancer, sorry, and um, also I think, again, we can see a little more clearly here that there is quite a challenging, we can say, a square being created here with, uh, on the one hand, Neptune down at 29 degrees of Pisces, but also up there again, we can see that Black Moon Lilith at 29 degrees of Virgo, and that wasn't in my awareness until I looked at this chart just now, and I think that that's also pushing the point, it's like forcing what I just talked about, that density, it's like this has to be transformed, it can't go anywhere, and the more it gets contorted and imploding, the more painful it's going to become energetically, emotionally, even physically, so if you have stuff coming up for you, you brothers and sisters out there watching this show, please really take the opportunity to work with it, transform it, use that perhaps polarizing energy to transform and and use the dynamic kinetic energy that's been created with that transformation to fuel your own projects into your own personal death and rebirth process. So I feel like that's where that that square to uh, to Neptune in Pisces, Bella, is really forcing us to say, look, come on, guys and gals, are you getting this? Do you see the incoherency of what we're leaving behind so that we can step into something that's much more coherent, much more fractal, much more natural? This also tells me that there is like a reset and rebalancing of the masculine and, and feminine energy, even in the planet. Uh, so after all of this polarization, it feels like the planet is going through a full reset of those polarities because we've been called to make choices with so much information. So this higher perspective is super important so that we don't keep the polarization moving forward within groups, within politics, within families or anything like that. We need to be able to balance those two. And how do we do that best? Well, I would like to suggest is that we don't allow ourselves to get triggered or attached to any of the energies that would cause that, which is again, where we have the benefit of the blue magnetic eagle energy to rise above 
those triggering situations, those polarities that we might be encountering because Capricorn uh, is largely also about focusing on managing our responsibilities. It's about mastery. It's about how are we handling ourselves, right? So we're entering into this energy of Capricorn here because this is the first of two Capricorn moons. Uh, the second one comes up on July uh, the 21st, which I think is, is pretty interesting. That's also, I think, the day after uh, the first wave spell of of the new uh, calendar year. So whatever is happening on this Capricorn full moon, weirdly, because we're going to have two Capricorn full moons, uh, it, you know, just separated by a month or so, uh, is going to conclude um, with that Capricorn full moon. So this is kind of unique, uh, Bella. And if I'm understanding correctly, because the calendar's kind of got a little wonky uh, on the moons with that axis points, but because we're going to have these two in Capricorn, it's going to rebalance, interestingly, recalibrate the lunar cycle back into its normal format that it was uh, up until a, about a year and a half ago. I think it was when we had the Scorpio Taurus uh, full moons of things got thrown slightly out. It's been a slightly strange one because normally they follow a sequence and they haven't been doing that. They've been slightly different. So just putting that into people's awareness too, just let me consult my... Yeah, so it's July the 21st and that'll be at 29 degrees of Capricorn at the beginning of the White Wizard <laughs> wave spell. Wow. So if I'm reading this correctly, Correctly, it tells me that we've got these two full moons to really initiate magic. Uh, Capricorn is about mastery of all of these things, including ourselves. It comes after Sagittarius for a reason, and Sagittarius comes after Scorpio for a reason. You know, these are the signs that are really taking us into the world of transformation, of energy, of alchemizing ourselves. And by the time we get to Capricorn, we should be having a better handle on ourselves and how to do this energy in our life, which of course is what you've been teaching with the Mind Time and Magic course and what we're also sharing in a, in a different format, uh, but similarly with the Navigation Guide to Quantum Consciousness. So, But uh, Capricorn is also connected to governments and banking and institutions. And this weekend, uh, there is a BRICS uh, re a meeting going on and lots of countries gathering. And remember that because we're in the solstice, full moon and solstice at the same time, I feel it as a reset. It could be a new financial reset uh, that it because this is on the public stage uh, on the world axis. So it could affect the whole world. And look at the moon in, in Capricorn. So maybe really big moves in the financial area and big currency moves with Venus also being part of it. So maybe we'll hear some news around all of this. Well, as you've just said, and uh, we, we generally don't like to get too much into the narrative of the collective, but there are certain things that are going on in this regard. And one of the big corporate deals that was done was with the uh, petro uh, dollar in Saudi Arabia, which is coming to an end this coming week. So we can see that there is going to be some significant changes to world currency one way or the other. And I think that what we're being urged with this Capricorn energy really and even with this show as a preview is to is get prepared everybody this is not a doom and gloom exercise being prepared is not being stupid or, or down it's just being smart i think and um i think that maybe with this energy Bella, there's a little bit of like be realistic don't be pessimistic that's not helpful but be realistic and make sure that you're prepared and ready to to deal with anything mm -hmm. and remember that uh, saturn is still the ruler of this full moon and so it, it could be to do with those limitations, regulations, uh, restrictions. So let's see what's to come with all of those things. Um, I'd say, again, higher perspective is where we need to keep our, our, our vision. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I, I hope that our audience always tries to uh, or always understands that we try to present the energies as we see them with the possibilities that are incoming with the astrology, how they tie in with the the mind uh, wave spell but also to to also lean into the energies that we experience uh, as journeyers as medicine people as spiritual people you know we have our own intuitions our own downloads that we try to weave in where they feel like they make sense and i i, I do feel like we're being encouraged to um to to let go of the things that don't serve us and to make sure that we're not too attached to anything that could cause us suffering is to make sure that we've got flexibility in our life so that we can move with whatever the flow of the bigger river is is uh, whatever that looks like and it may be to do with finances in the near future and i'd say without any fears try to infuse the collective consciousness with your vision of the new earth of the new world what do you right. want for yourself and for the collective that will make a difference where there will be no worries uh where everybody will have what they need what the earth is taking care of like we don't uh destroy the resources or see everything as resources 
So let's start putting all of our visions, our collective visions of a better world and a, a new earth. Right, I love that. And also maybe just as a finishing note on that, with Ceres in retrograde during these two uh, Capricorn full moons in Capricorn, she doesn't actually cross over either of them. She's sort of somewhat wedged in between them. Uh, you know, I feel like we're being offered the opportunity to say, hey, are you actually ready to let go of the old paper money system and all of the inadequacies and injustices that that provides so that we can actually welcome in something that's much more equal, much more just, much more abundant for everybody, which I think is what you're alluding to with some of the meetings that are happening in the world right now that are looking to introduce a different type of system. And perhaps there are going to be competing systems, Bella. Maybe we're going to have to fill into our heart space to feel which one feels good for us. So again, uh, these are all possible. I don't like to think of competing, but more like collaborating. Why don't we put that vision there? Like the, the words that we use are also super important. So if you're calling in those words that are of division, then that's what we're calling in. So we, we need to be very mindful of our words and our vision all the time. Right. Good point. Yeah. So again, it's down to personal perspective and how we observe what is being offered to us. Uh, maybe other people don't see it that way, but that's not for us to worry about. So I think that's really um, that's it for the astrology. But I'm just scanning over to see uh yeah and also just as a final nice thought you know with the energy in cancer it's very much about the home and the garden this is a time to maybe invite some friends over have a nice meal maybe spend some time in the garden uh if it's not too hot wherever you are uh maybe to start growing some nice plants some medicine plants and obviously this is what we're going to talk about today and depending on where you are in the world you might have to be a little uh cautious about the legality of that but uh, Bella, what is the for those who can't guess what is our plant of this wave spell it's the beautiful cannabis plant and uh, depending on the content of THC, they might call it hemp or they might call it other, um, um, well, different names, depending on the, the variety. But what I want to mention here uh, when it comes to this plant is that we are full of receptors in our body, in our like our immune cells, our immune system, our central nervous system, our bones, they many of our cells have the receptors for this plant. And one of the things that I want to emphasize is that even Zach mentioned it in the last call we had with him is that once we incarnate in this planet, we are part of the planet and we're connected to the plants and we're connected to the animals. We have like 94% uh, similar genetics to a dog. Uh, or like 96 or 98 to a monkey and then it's crazy numbers to fruits we're like 60 percent similar genetics to a banana or something like that so when we understand that we are so connected uh so we see how we can all collaborate and, and help each other and how those receptors are actually there for a reason and this is why we want to talk about this amazing plan today Right. And, you know, there is so much to talk about this wonderful plan that goes by many different names, uh, which we generally call Santa Maria. Yeah, um, but its technical name is cannabis. And there are many different varieties of that, including sativa and indica and many sub varieties. Now, uh, this is a plan that... Uh, worked with for a very, very long time. Uh, many parts of the world, it's had a stigma attached to it. I think that's also part of the energy that is shifting, Bella, because for me, cannabis is a plant that really embodies the love and creativity of the goddess. And many of us are feeling the return of the goddess energy and have been really, uh, I would say, over most of the course of this year. But it's, it came back so strongly on that Venus Kazemi that we just had a few days ago. And the the, the mother plant, the goddess, the spirit of, of this uh, plant is very much in the field of the collective because it's here to help us. Now, as you uh, said, and I think we're going to do a much deeper dive on this wonderful plant towards the end of August. Something is coming through uh, from the beautiful Santa Maria. And she's certainly urging me to put something together to explore the breadth of what this plant has to offer us because as you said we have cannabinoid receptors in our bodies um so it's, it's like we're hardwired to receive the beauty of this plant right and i can see on cue you've done a nice slide for us about this. <laughs> the internet has a lot of aids so right. i'll just give credit to the internet with, uh, with some of those uh so yeah it's just a quick cannabinoid guide uh as a scientist i did uh quite a bit of research on the different cannabinoids and it has so many different compounds. And a cannabinoid is a group of chemical compounds that are, are part of the plant and they have different effects. 
And so here the most common ones are CBD, CBG, and CBC, which are the ones that don't have a psychoactive effect. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit about what are the good qualities or benefits of those. And then we have CBN, THCV, and THC, which are the ones that do have a psychoactive effect. So we need to be able to differentiate CBD versus THC. CBD, no psychoactive effect. THC is the one that gives you the, the, the feeling high type of effect. So, and it all depends on the content of THC, which is this compound. If it's 0.3% or less, uh, then uh, it's, you can work with this plant and you won't have any of those effects. And some of the amazing things that you can uh, use the CBD for is, is an anti-inflammatory, it aids uh, with sleep, it relieves anxiety, is an antioxidant, antibacterial, antidepressant, muscle relaxant. Uh, it works really well in cases of epilepsy. And this is not medical advice. This is just some research. <laughs> um, it reduces nausea decreases uh, seizures, chronic pain. I mean, it has so many amazing qualities. Uh, rheumatoid arthritis, it helps with that to reduce the growth of cancer cells. So there is a lot out there and you can go and do some more research. Um, but CBD, even my mom, like she was having lots of pain with her uh, articulations, her back pain and everything. And since she's been doing the CBD oils, she's just amazing. She's really happy and back to dancing and doing lots of fun things. So, um, yeah, and the other one that I highly recommend, so CBD and also CBG, has, it has very similar um, qualities uh, to the CBD, but it works really well on the bones as well. Uh, lowers the blood pressure, uh, I mean, it has so many. It also helps fighting in fighting tumors. It's also antidepressant, helps with anxiety. I've worked with most of them, but those two are pretty powerful, really good. And, you know, it's the kind of thing you can buy a, an oil, a CBD oil, and, and it's going to be okay. But if you can have a plant or just call the spirit of the plant, it's going to start awakening within you all of those uh, amazing benefits. Right. It really is an amazing plant and there is a lot to say about it, hence why I'm getting the nudge to do something a little more in depth uh, later in the summer, uh, which uh, will, will come through when it wants to. But in the meantime, of course, we have to be responsible here and say that this is a plant that still has some legal issues in some countries. So if you're in one of those countries, please be careful about how you obtain it uh, within those legal guidelines. However, of course, it is being freed up in many countries and even states in the US now in different ways. And I have mixed uh, feelings about that too. But if we're just talking about the plant in general, we have all of these wonderful body uh, medicines that Bella's just talked about, but also, and this is one of the other reasons we included it, is that it's very much a plant of the fifth dimension, a plant of the goddess, and a plant that allows of us to- the higher to the 5D rate. vision, yeah. Exactly, the higher 5D vision. And uh, there are many different ways to imbibe this medicine. It doesn't always have to be through the traditional hippie route of smoking it. Uh, we can say that we can also enjoy types of edibles and uh, oils and even salves uh, that we can apply topically to the skin. I mean, the salves that I gave you for your recovery of the legs were amazing. They had uh, they had cannabis and they had arnica. And that one, well, that was a very powerful one. And you could feel it because you were talking to the plant. You were able to feel the effects and the help from the plant. Right. So that's what I was alluding to to earlier in, in the show is I'm going to be sharing more about my journey and the medicines that have helped me, the homeopathic remedies that have helped me. But I have to say that the combination of, of uh, cannabinoid uh, or cannabis with, with uh, arnica in a cell form applied topically was incredibly healing for yeah. me, particularly post-op. And it also allowed me very, very gently to access, not in a very, very full-on kind of way, but it allowed me to gently access some of my higher dimensional mind so that I could process everything that was happening around the time of the accident and even the healing process and to allow me to feel very succinctly what was going on in my feet and to work with it from my higher mind perspective because it's really been my mind uh, that has healed healed the feet or is in the process of healing the feet so a uh, lot to say about that Bella and um, we'll be talking more about this wonderful plant but as a final thought yes you know uh, call the spirit of the plant in and work with it in whichever way comes to you and uh, yeah just be open to what the goddess wants to share through this beautiful plant yes and um, we're coming to the end of the show uh this slide is to remind you of the 13 part journey called the navigation guide to quantum consciousness which is a galactic atlas for new earth 
And it's uh, a collaboration between David and myself. We're putting together 13 steps, 13 chapters. Uh, chapter one and two have already been released. Um, and we're about to record chapter three, uh, hopefully in the next few days. So very, uh, very good feedback as well. It's a, it's a journey that is going to help you reach your quantum consciousness, but also manifest and create something, uh, especially if you have a dream or a vision at this moment. Right. And uh, for those who haven't yet tuned into that process, as Isabella said, it's available on quantumplanet.world at the uh, address there, quantumplanet.world forward slash galactic atlas. Each video is purchasable for just $26 and can be accessed time and again at your own leisure. But as it's unfolding, we're releasing uh, each chapter every 13 days. And as Bella said, the next chapter will be coming out with the commencement actually of the Blue Magnetic Eagle. And we'll be about, Bella, what's topic uh, or chapter number three entitled? What's the current chapter title? Chapter three is the spark of light. And we're going to get electrified, get our projects electrified. How do we bring the energy into the manifestation and creation process? Right, which is exactly what I was alluding to earlier with that wonderful Mercury Kazemi happening on day three of the Blue Magnetic Eagle. So when I put all of those pieces together, to me, that seems like a day where we can really activate our fifth dimensional energy visions or we can and say ideas or prayers however that is using these methodologies that we're laying out and so what we're doing Bella really I guess is we're deep diving on each of the different tones of each of the 13 days of a wave spell right and seeing how this can relate in, in easy to understand layman's terms and how you can work with lots of different motifs to really activate not just each day of a 13 day wave spell but also the much longer cycles maybe within a castle maybe within a whole Vulcan so this is where we're getting kind of clever and pulling in different timelines and working across uh, time and space in a very very coherent magical way uh, so we hope that many more of you can join us uh, on that um, that journey right yes so i think this is the end of our show um, we definitely want to encourage you to connect with the energy of the eagle the blue eagle keep the higher perspective um, call in the spirit of the plant if it's a plant that you feel you want to connect to and uh, the astrology is just telling us more of the same and be very conscious in your choices, uh, avoid uh, polarity and division um, and less subjective, more objectivity, I think is what it's calling us. Aho uh -huh, to that. So thank you. Thank you everybody for joining in uh, or joining us rather for today's uh, episode of the quantum compass thank you to bella as always for putting together the mine uh, side of that and as we move forwards yeah let's really be in that eagle's perch perspective that higher vision uh, place of of seeing let's say more of the picture and operating with more information more of ourselves present and less of the polarizing energy but if we do see the polarizing energy uh, as we've already shared bella we can work with it right as a catalyzing force so there is nothing that can't be used for your own benefit even things that are challenging and i think as we get to explore more of the new earth cuboid or 5d frequencies we're going to understand that we're actually in a huge playground a user-friendly environment as we've said before so uh, i think that that's the way i'm moving forwards that's what i'm excited about uh, i know you are too bella and hopefully by listening to this show and many other inputs put uh, all of you out there are also moving into that space too and, and rising above whatever may be uh, the challenges that are around us in the world right now because that's also something that we need we need to have those challenges to allow us to evolve and transform so and, yeah and let's remember the bigger picture let's keep our eyes on the prize which is a new earth and what we want keep on putting that vision out there if you have a project that is going to help lots of people if you have a project that is going to help the earth if you have something that is going to benefit lots of people, let's keep on pumping that. And that is eyes on the prize. There is where you want to end up. And now, hopefully with these tips and navigation guides that we were putting together, we're trying to help lots of people to do more of that. Right, exactly. So with that, everybody, thank you very much. Uh, we're going to take the Eagle's Perch perspective and fly away uh, and <laughs> view what it is that we want to, to bring forth into the world in these coming days, weeks and months. And uh, definitely inviting all of you to do the same and uh, hoping that we'll be able to meet many of you very, very soon. We have lots of our own exciting, creative ideas that are coming through, which we hope to be able to share in due course, because that's the world that we live in. It's a world of possibilities and creative ideas and potentiality. So... We'll see you again very soon, everybody. In the meantime, take it easy and we'll see you for the next round of the Quantum Compass in just under a fortnight's time.
Ciao for now. The great wave spell. Bye.